So having discussed a bit about this low power design stuff, let's go a bit deeper into multiple voltage domains just to get a feel for it. So we have a multiple domain design. We have this floor plan here, and here's the basic core area, but what we decided to do is make several power domains. So what we should first do is create power domain names and a list of cells connected to them and where they are physically. So this would be power domain one, power domain two, power domain three, and we'd have to tell the tool every, each and every cell which power domain it's associated with. Then we have to place macros. We have to remember that, say, this RAM sits in power domain one, we better put it in the area where power domain one is, and same with this ROM in power domain two. This IP would be in power domain three, so let's make sure we place it there. We have to really take into account things such as routing congestion and orientation. Um, usually it's best to do this manually rather than auto. Okay, and finally we have to place switches. Sometimes we'll have these power gating switches, which I'll discuss in a minute, so we should put them around our power domains that may have retention. Level shifters. Um, we may have a power domain scheme such as this. So we have this, this domain which works at 0.7 volts, and this domain works at 0.9 volts. And this domain is really complex. We can power it at 0.7 volts or at 1.08 volts, or maybe even move in between them. Um, that makes our life a bit more complex than usual. So we have this 0.9 volt um, domain, and we have an 0.7 volt domain, and we have to have a level shifter that pushes data from one domain to another. And same with an 0.7 volt domain to an 0.9 volt domain. The uh, things get really tricky when we have these types of uh, uh, domains that can, so if we go from 0.7 volts to 0.9 volts, it would be an upshift versus if we go from 0.9 to uh, 1.08, the upshift would be in the other direction. So we have to take care of all of this. Um, we'd have a logic model for these types of buffers that sit in between the domains or or actually connect between the domains where we'd have something like it had it'd be a buffer so there'd be these two inverters where the input of one would be uh, one VDD and the output would be a different VDD and let's see how we can do that so actually when we're just driving down so if we're going from 0.9 volts to 0.7 volts we can generally just use a regular CMOS inverter and everything will work well the problem is when we need to drive the voltage up, such as 0.7 to 0.9 volts, or we need to um, take care of both ways. Sometimes this will be a downshift and sometimes this will be an upshift. So the basic looking circuit to do it is what we call a DVC, DC VSL um, type of a logic gate. So this type of a buffer, it makes sure to pull up to the high VDD when we're doing a, a voltage uh, rise. This can also um, take care of the voltage low. Um, actually, these types of, uh, of gates, they have one main um, voltage, the VDD high, which would be um, usually in this case VDD2. Um, the the inf inverters at the input, they may work on the low VDD, so they might need to have a second VDD, but we're going to have to stick this into these standard cell rows, and uh, often these will be a double row or triple row, uh, as we can see here, and that that's okay. Um, if we have a special site that takes care of it, the place and route tool will know how to deal with it, but what we have to notice is that we'll only have in a certain area of standard cell rows a single VDD, either the VDD1 or the VDD2. In this case, we have VDD1 all over here. So what that means is that when we take VDD2 into the cell, we have to input it as a signal pin. That's called secondary power routing, and it has to be taken care of, and it's very non-trivial, especially for IR drop and so forth on these types of voltages. So this is uh, quite complex, and I, I won't go into any more detail about it now. Um, another point about multiple voltage domain uh, design is power gating. So sometimes we want to turn off a uh, block so to, to um, lower leakage when we're not using it. So this can either be done with a header switch or with a footer switch. We just put uh, basically a single transistor um, that gets some sort of a control that closes off the, uh, uh, the path from VDD to ground, and it makes leakage much lower. Well, um, there is, of course, a question here. How big does this switch has to have to be? And it has to be really big because we don't want it to be uh, as some sort of resistance or uh, significant resistance on the path to our standard gates inside. So how do we do this? Well, we have to have some sort of stripes of VDD, say, that go into some sort of switches, and then we'll have like our ground, which uh, if we're talking about a uh, header type switch, uh, this would be a header switch, and it powers these rails that actually feed 
the um, the cells themselves. So how are we going to do that? There are several ways. Um, the two primary approaches are to do it in, in this outer gated style where we'll put the switches. These are all switches that are um, uh, parallel to each other. We'll put them around the domains. And that's really um, nice from a floor plan type of a, uh, of a concept because we can just do our regular old place and route inside the, the different domains and we just have to uh, treat the switches outside and route uh, the, their signals to them uh, outside the actual floor plan of the, this part. But it means that we have a longer way to go from each uh, of these switches until we get to the actual gates. So it would be much better if we could uh, interleave these switches inside the, um, the, the domains themselves and that's another way of doing it. It just makes the whole floor planning uh, a bit harder. So how do you define all of that? Well, um, we're not going to discuss it now. We'll leave it to a, a different course. But in general, there's a command format for this, or, well, there are actually two command formats for this. Um, one of the command formats is called CPF, or Common Power Format. That's Cadence's proprietary format. And it's surprisingly, actually kind of confusingly, similar to MMMC. So if you get used to using MMMC, um, it's not that hard to go to uh, CPF once you learn and get the hang of it and understand what each of the commands are for. However, um, Synopsys has uh, their own type of a unified power format, or UPF, which is their way of uh, making it common or unified. Um, it's very similar to SDC. So if you like SDC, then you'll probably get more used to UPF. There are several um, uh, intricacies, differences between CPF and UPF. Again, I'm not going to go into them here in this course. UPF has recently been standardized by the IEEE, um, so maybe it's actually winning the fight, though uh, CPF is still fully supported by Cadence Tools, as is UPF. Um, I guess neither of them is either common or unified. So um, luckily for you, we're not going to talk about this anymore right now. Instead, we'll start with the basics of floor planning.